it's like a nice way of getting out of the way. Uh -huh. Hello. <laughs> this is the Federation of the Link call for uh, April 12th, uh, 2023. Thanks, Lantian. Keep going. Yeah. yeah, so I'm on call for like Google Meet and apps, a workspace in general for second level, and also in the evenings for social co-op. <laughs> nice. So it's like, a, yeah, yeah. But then uh, it's nice. I get it out of the way and um, I ha I, then I will travel. I will go to the US and so on. So. If our futures are portfolio careers, how are we all going to manage all of our relationships and, and responsibilities? How does this work? <laughs> wow. Intriguing. Anybody else? How are you doing? Yeah. I know the answer to that question. Oh, we perfect. <laughs> what is it? We, we don't? We won't. We'll just we let won't. go. <laughs> when, when, when I hear that young people... <clears throat> When I hear that young people these days don't do email, I'm like, well, good, fine. But then I'm like, okay, okay. So they're texting or WhatsApping or, or Insta-ing. They're using Insta not for pictures, but for messages, right? Which happens a whole bunch. So how do you find the thing you promised to do anybody? And how do you remember what channel it was on? Like really, seriously. Or are they just being birthed now that humans have evolved such terrific brains? Are they being born with with perfect recall so that this is, this is a non-issue for them and it's merely an old fart issue for me? I mean, I think that, uh, you know, it has to do with um, trying to parse down what's required of you in part through difficulty. Yes, for a little the friction. Other person. Yes. Um, so baking it so that somebody does have to reach out to you again and ask you a second time um because yeah email it, it's the spam problem but like it's not just spam it's work spam right there's so many things that people are asking to do to do right. in a portfolio situation in life right like the and people all have it it's the top priority for them at that moment in their entire life for everyone when they ask it but is it their top priority tomorrow? Well, if they remind you, then it moves up the priority list. Right. So you can call that a uh, distributed cognition. As in, <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. I mean, recovery. Now I'm trying to like uh, leave, leave it behind. And I, when people ping me out something, which I should have done, I'm like, well, thank you. I mean, we're thinking together. Now I know that this is really important. So I guess you get a chance to actually do it. Yeah. It's been working so far, but I yeah, I'm not I, as somebody who has followed this technique for a while. I don't know how well it's working, but um, I don't know if I have any other choice either. Is the problem? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, yeah, I think unified inbox is an interesting like uh, side question. Like, will it uh, it, will it help? I guess uh, you know that the, uh, we say spam, but like you know the attention scarcity or, or the problem is like you know you can only pay attention to so many things. Uh, you know, so you could imagine you know like having a unified inbox, which used to be the panacea uh, for me, but it's like well then suddenly you have uh, like a thousand things. So I I have an idea. Why don't we create a unified inbox that has an auction as its gate inward, so that. <laughs> Everybody who wants your attention has to bid for it. Right. And then you just gift your friends like free passes through the gate. Uh, Ross <laughs> Mayfield and Jack trying. Lynch had that as a startup. And uh -huh. Esther tried Isn't that to what Open Collective does? Is it? Like, doesn't Open Collective <laughs> allow you to set bids on Git, uh, set um, bounties on GitHub issues? I think that was a, maybe it's not a feature there anymore. Maybe it was a feature of something else that worked with Open Collective. I could have sworn I saw a thing where it's like, is this important to you? Put a bounty on the GitHub issue um, and then somebody will resolve it. Maybe it was for the GitHub managers. like So that way you could get more people to be open sourced and involved uh, or involved in open source. I don't know. I think like the unified inbox concept is... I think fundamentally bad. Like all of all of my uh, all of my organizational work is trying to separate my inboxes when people other people want to combine them. Um, even my actual email inbox, right? Like I create um, an email uh, alias for different things that I engage in that are different contexts, right? So this group is actually under my IndieWeb alias. 
So if I want to think about IndieWeb at that moment, I'll go to all of the things that are labeled IndieWeb in my inbox, which is automated through coming in through that email. But um, if I'm talking to someone about um, press forward work, for example, an open source project I'm involved with, that has its own email address. And I go to that when I'm ready to deal with that. Um, of course, the problem is sometimes there are things that I forget that I need to deal with in one of these inboxes. But that's what my notes are supposed to help me out with um, in terms of prioritization. But that's, I mean, you could just have one email address and just use different labels, you know, based on various parameters. But I mean, you're relying on everybody to use email. I've got right. five clients. I've got three clients and they all, they all use teams at the moment, but different teams. Yeah. Like I, I just lost track of how many different teams I'm now a member of each with them with dozens of channels. And that's just one platform teams Then I've got, you know, then there's people trying to contact me by WhatsApp and SMS and signal and, and messenger. And I just, I, um, it, this is why I've really invested a little bit of time in a tool. Like you said, you said notes like obsidian because I just pour everything into that and try yeah. to keep track of it. But it's still, where is that message? Because I need to reply to it eventually. I can't reply to it in Obsidian. And it's yeah. a nightmare. I find it an absolute nightmare. But there's no way that we're going to be able to unify all these things because none of the vendors want to share. Want that. Share. So this is where like, I, I always go back to the idea of like, we 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 will have to re, um, uh, you know recede into the user agent in the end. Like, do we need the browser to actually like give us the tools for like actually interconnect interconnectivity and you know cross reference? Uh, at least that seems like it will cover everything with this web, web base, which is not Zoom usually, but you know like most you know. Uh, so uh, yeah. I, I do think that Matrix is a very good platform to, to build on, it seems, to build like as a hub for bridges. So it's like, you know, some platforms are better than others for, uh, you know, in the sense that they support like richer, the richer abstractions that let you impersonate and so on. I, for a recent group, I tried to install and use Element, which builds on Matrix. Yeah. And was able right. to install it and configure it, which was kind of problematic because it was clunkier than most. But then I wasn't able to connect with the other people who were on Element. I couldn't find them in the directory. I don't know what went wrong. And we gave up. Yes. We gave when up. You, it was when terrible. You started, yeah. Uh, there's some, something you at least uh, when you push, uh, when you press like start a conversation, it doesn't look for people somehow. You have to click again into a separate tab. It's, it's, uh, but the, it's, it's been improving. <laughs> it was worse. Uh, and honestly, it's still the best I know. That's the thing. Even with all these drawbacks. We're, so we're so far down the road on technology and communication and all that kind of stuff. How how is this not a better solved thing? And how is its complexity seemingly getting worse over time instead of competition? Better? Everyone wants to, compete so, to be the the monopoly on your attention. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so we should just all never have progressed beyond beyond Minitel and Prodigy Mail. Or or just end capitalism then, then yeah or resolve yeah. that problem very simple <laughs> upgrade I mean, i've been using upgrade in capitalism just because it seems like less confrontational well that's good yeah. as opposed to, to as it. opposed to defund the police let's upgrade the police oh really <laughs> police, yes <laughs> <laughs> well i think people will be like yeah let's give the police lasers oh. <laughs> so dangerous. well we couldn't yeah. afford the lasers so we just strap flashlights to their helmets uh, yeah. Well, yeah it's real um, i will I will note that, like, I think the big thing that makes it the difference for just making it more distinguishable and usable, which is why I've ended up more heavily in Slack than a lot of the other things, is when it's individually addressable. Because then it gets back to what you're talking about, Matthew, with like the reply stuff, right? If you can link an individually addressable link to the message that this is associated with, then suddenly everything becomes much easier to manage. Oh, yeah, it's it's amazing. Yeah, I I, I built this a uh, uh, very simple word for matrix which has this. So uh, okay, so I'm a fan. But uh, so if you use a wiki link or a tag in any matrix room with like this bot, it will both dump the immediately bot, uh, dump the whole message to the Agora, and also link back to the uh, to the message. That sounds useful. Uh, that does sound good. It is very useful. <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. uh, and that's actually one thing why one group reached out and they said like I, I would like to have an hour for that feature so apparently people are and it seems so simple to build yeah so i i and, and no child platform that i know of uh, like even support this interesting mm. um, what is, uh is that open sourced Could we yeah yeah it? no it's the simplest thing yeah yeah it's part of our award uh, i can uh an example and the other thing of course is that all of these different platforms will probably get ai agents in there for you so you know when somebody wants to talk to me they talk to my agent first and have a go in for it and then the agents sort of then sends me an email saying this guy wants to talk to you about something follow this link and go back to the place and, and then i'll be able to i'll be able to handle that because that will bring everything back to email into one place which i can manage maybe not an email maybe send something to my personal wiki i i don't know honestly um, you say but, that but what's what's super interesting to me right is you're basically just describing a secretary right yeah uh, <laughs> yeah oh but, what a secretary <laughs> yeah but what's interesting to me is like With, don't want to pay what I've, yeah what i've seen is that people have found secretaries less and less useful like all of the um uh, executives at our company have basically like given up on using the secretaries for that type of function um and instead they're more like there for scheduling stuff um i think that's just it, it's very difficult for another human to figure out your prior, personal prioritization i despair of an ai ever figuring it out um mm. personally yeah, I'm not saying it's going to work, but I'm saying I'm sure they're going to try. And I wish they sure. would succeed. I would pay, you know, I would pay an AI for that really better than paying a secretary. If it got so. closer and reduced the choices I had to two or three and I could get this one and then went and did all the all the footwork to, like, confirm everything, that'd be a pretty awesome just in itself. Well, sure, there are AI-based scheduling, right? There is AI-based yeah. scheduling. Is it, was, is it Otter? Otter the AI? I think. No. Uh, no, that's a transcriber. Yeah, auto the transcriber. Oh, yeah, might have, yeah, sorry, something else. Yeah. And uh, Matthew, since you're only with us for a half hour, uh, what would you like us to talk about? Uh, we don't have to talk about this. This was just our default kibitz topic as at the start of the call. Oh well, um, I guess top of mind right now is um, massive wiki is coming along quite nicely, as Peter would, you know, would would tell you if I wasn't here anyway, I guess. Uh, and we would really like to work with one or two people on ex on just the dimensions that we're using. When I say massive wiki, I meant the, the pilot project for, you know, uh, thinking tools, tools for thought map. TFT map. Um, TFT map, thank you. Um, it's the end of the day here. I'm a bit exhausted. Had a really crap day, actually. Oh, I'm um, sorry. And sorry. <laughs> just technically just technical problems just um i i, just, I won't bore you with it. um and uh yeah we've we've got these 11 dimensions for how you measure a tool for thought and you know this is something which i originally boiled down by reading other people's stuff you know bentley did a big document two or three other people here posted things which i boiled it all down we had a we had a big discussion amongst the three of us, and it would be really good to know whether other people agree with these dimensions or not. And so that was the idea of April. In April, we were going to get people to, to comment on it, and um, we haven't really managed to do that. So that's something I'd like to throw in the ring for discussion, if that's okay. Apart from that, any ideas on how to hook up a chat GPT or something similar to a personal store of um, notes and using that profitably, you know, how to, how to, how to interrogate, uh, how to interrogate an LLM whilst it's reading a, a particular corpus of, of notes is also something I I'm looking at right now. So those are a couple of things to talk about. And if, if that's, if either is interesting, I'm cool with either. I'm enjoying the phrase how to interrogate an LLM and picturing one of them strapped into a chair with like electrodes yes. on its head. Yes, you will. You will now not lie or hallucinate and there'll be something I didn't already know. And then I'm seeing the famous scene from The Wire and other places where they put a colander on the, the suspect's head and wire it to the photocopier. And then they have a sheet of paper that says he's lying in the photocopier. Then they press the button and it comes out. He's lying. It's like, ah. <laughs> 
Is this really a thing? I have never watched The Wire. I've heard it's very you good. You must watch The Wire. It's some of the best movie yeah. slash TV ever made, I think. I it is really, really nice, yes. Uh, and holds up well. You can also write, uh, like, first watch the one minute Family Guy, I think, clip, which is about how people say always are saying the, the, you must watch The Wire. Oh, I, I've <laughs> never seen that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which I, I can relate to because I do that, yes. Anyway, that's that's me. Um, what else? Oh, so, I um... so about the map. Sorry, like, uh, can we, uh, should we? Uh, you said in April. Uh, so should we do it now? Like, uh, like uh, uh, maybe like, uh, do you have a link? Uh, sorry, I should have it, but I don't. It's in the. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, mate. It's fine. It's in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Um, the page on the on the TFT map um, called "How We Measure Thinking Tools," and it sets out a small table with eleven dimensions. Yeah. A definition of in a couple of lines and uh, some guidance on what I think a tool for thought has to do to score highly on that dimension. And you know, the architecture would allow us. You know, we could we could have an entire page about each dimension if we need to. There's also some space to put in other proposed dimensions, a place to park dimensions we don't use. Whatever. Yeah. But it's 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 what it is right now. And <laughs> so, so so to to contribute, I should take these dimensions and contribute um, such an evaluation of tools. When... <clears throat> As it says at the bottom of the page. Yeah. Sorry. That's no, fine. You know, if if you if you have any comments on these dimensions, there's a couple of ways of doing it. You can there's a commenting function at the very bottom of the page. You can just post a comment. Yeah. Um, but it, or you actually like you know join in as a massive wiki contributor, and then you can do you know compose your own your own notes. Your, you can write blog posts about. It. You can just you can just add files to the massive wiki and link yeah. them in there so you can see them. Um, I see that Aram has actually. Um, this is your profile, right? And he did a great job going through all the tools he uses. Is Aram? Oh is Aram? Goodness, do you have man, a, look at this. Yeah, wow. he, absolutely. Do you have an n of greater than one, or is Aram the only person who's done this? <laughs> uh, well, if you go to the people page, mm. you've got six people. Um, uh, let's have a look at Francians. Yeah, I think I left the yeah, actually yeah, writing. Yeah, yeah. yeah to do. You, you've, you've, done, uh, you've done the first part. Okay, okay, yeah, but th this will answer my question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then, uh, Hank, Hank, um, <laughs> Hank did something interesting. Hank Kuhn, he he um, decided to not just do thinking tools, but also thinking practices. We distinguish between the two. Yeah, uh, and this is exactly why you know why you do pilot projects and then you open them up. You know, people come in with ideas. Why don't you do that? Like, oh, yeah. It's not a bad idea. We should we should think about that. So we had a good conversation with him last week, right, Pete? Um, uh, about um, and he so he's he thinks we should actually have um, uh, yeah these these practices as well. I don't know whether Pete's code is going to be able to cope with that, but um, you know, well that's his problem. That's his problem, you know. <laughs> 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 so yeah, the, the total number of people six, but not all of them have done everything. So um, thank you very much, Aaron, for for your. Uh, what do you think of the dimensions? I mean, you've used them. You've you've rated Obsidian, Press Forward, Pinboard, Instapaper, Arena, Deep Down, Seven Fifty Words, uh, by these dimensions. Did they make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, I guess. The, the one thing that I think was maybe a little weird was like openness as a rating. I don't know if okay. I got it right. I think um, I interpreted it as like openness to new users um, in a sense okay. that like how easy it is to get in. Because I felt like if it openness meant open sourced, that's like a true false, right? I don't know if that's necessarily a rating. I mean, obviously, there are open source projects that are more welcoming than others. I guess this rating works for either uh, of those definitions. Um, well, the in the in the the file, you know, how we define um, thinking tools. The definition of openness is how well does it play with other tools? How interoperable and customizable is it? And now that I look at that, mm -hmm. I I don't understand why I wrote and customizable. How interoperable it is 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 open customizable is a completely different thing so i need to take that word those the customizable term out it's funny how you see things which when you when you talk about it with somebody that you just don't see when you're writing it 
And I wrote this. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah. That happens with <laughs> recording, gathering, everything. Yeah, so, right. So, interoperable, there may be a, an opportunity, and this is like where I don't know if it's, uh, we'll have to think about the others, but like interoperability is uh, very important. And openness in the sense of like uh, free software is very important. And it seems like they, they may be two dimensions. Uh, ideally, of course, you can like probably for most, but like just by fact, because I'm thinking Obsidian is very interoperable because it's based on Mardan and, you know, all these nice things, mm -hmm. uh, uh, simple standards, but it's not, it's, it's actually, it will, for me, it will score like less than five just because it's not open source. Mm -hmm. So that seems like it will muddy, muddy the waters to put it somewhere. Yeah, this is it. And this is whatever happens when you, when you have a conversation with people who know a field reasonably well, tools for thought. You know, you, you take one dimension and you say, oh, I think we should split this into two. Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. And before and before long, you have, you've gone from 11 to 59 dimensions. Right, right. And, it gets, and, and it's a lot of work for people to score 59 times on each yeah. tool. And it's also the audience for this are people who are new to thinking tools. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure what they would like is, you know, which is the best one? Which is the one yeah. that scores the highest out of 10? Right, right. You want one number because you have like, yeah. so maybe one suggestion to not increase the number of uh, um, dimensions will be maybe data sovereignty and interoperability seem closer to air to me, potentially, oh, than uh, open sourceness, free software, and like uh, interoperability. So maybe so that could be fit. Just listen to this, this here from Jerry first, because you put yeah. your hand up. Sorry. Thank you. Um, so uh, a question that's starting to come up um, a little bit more for me uh, in talking generally about the kind of stuff we're talking about here is how do we help muggles find their way to the thinking tool that's their best fit? So the, right. and the map is an attempt to offer a tool for that process, I think, yes. um, and also for IT architects or knowledge management experts or whoever else to go like shopping or, or comparing or even to promote the union of different, you know, the, the interoperability of tools that aren't yet interoperable because they would complement each other so well. Who knows how that plays out? Um, but I think that there's a really interesting thing we might be able to make practical, maybe even just as a simple decision tree or as a, hey, go test these four things and then answer these three questions. And that will bring you back into, these are very likely the tools you will like. Something like that, but I think there's. Mm. We, I, I I don't know that I I haven't given any sort of formal time to this this question, but of somehow uh, it may not be simplifiable to what I'm hoping for, but a really simple Muggle friendly uh, front end that we could just aim people toward and say, hey, if you find any of this tools for thinking conversation cool and would like to try it yourself, here's a way to find your way to a tool or a set of tools that you like. And there's a complementary thought to this, which is even closer to the TFT map, which is once you have like more than 20 things in a map like this, and there's a lot of data collected, it turns into it turns into a hairball really quickly. So if there's a room for the, a couple of curated points of view, like, oh, Pete has a suite. Of, it's a little bit like build a second brain in Tiago Forte or linking your thinking uh, and Nick uh, Milo, they have chosen a particular set of tools which they train you up in and then they have a series of intellectual frameworks for how they do what they do and so forth that's interesting because that is a curated view on the hairball and if you can get if you can curate a half dozen curators to have interesting and different ways of thinking about and ways of using the tools that's easier to come into because then you're basically finding a recommendation that works for you and that then you install three tools and you don't have to worry if they're mixed and match because the person recommending is like hey these three things work really well well together so so there's that too okay i want to respond to the second thing more than, than the first although to be honest i, I the decision tree I, I think that we, should, we should talk about that too because that's a a, a a lovely idea um, but what you just described is actually inherent in the architecture. If you go into somebody's personal profile, so Aram's or mine or whatever, in the template, if people when the people provide the, you know, the information, they don't just provide here are the scores of the tools. They also there's a section in there uh, called my current tools and practices, right? 
So mine says, look, I use inbox curation to identify high, you know, priority sources of content. I auto label high priority newsletters. I maintain the Twitter list. I use GTD. I use progressive summarization via Zettel cast and overviews. And I'm skipping over it. But in, in five or six bullet points, I mention all the tools I use and most of the important practices in a, in a it's like a story almost. So there's a little bit above that about me, who I am. And then here is how I use a particular set of tools and practices together. This is how I combine them. And then below that, you see the scores I give the tools that I know about. And to me, that's probably, I, I included that in the architecture because I thought that a newcomer is more likely to say, well, uh, I'll find somebody in this list of people who seems to have a similar approach than that I would have, but is further down the path and I'll be inspired by their collection of tools. Right. And then when I click on a link to go to a particular tool from that personal profile, I'll find other people who use the tool and I'll go and check out how they've integrated, integrated it in to a different set of tools and practices, but there's one tool in common. So, you know, it's not just a collection of, data about you know ratings of tools it's also a collection of stories about how you use, people use them and i think those stories would be really good raw material for your decision tree love that and it could be that one person's answer is oh i took the build a second brain course and i do that and that that's yeah. just a reference over to basb absolutely uh, but then some people have developed their own flows and we're really interested you know i, mm -hmm. I want to know how marshall kirkpatrick manages his info i want to know how maggie appleton uh, curates her gardens for digital garden. Yeah, in, in a in an ideal world, we'll get this to the point where Maggie and 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 Michael and everybody else will put in their stuff. You know, you can also blog. You can you can you can write blog posts in here and then repost them and do pers permanent versions and do all sorts of other nice things. And if it becomes a useful universe, we'll get that sort of content in there. And then I imagine when you got that huge. That, you know, that collection of content, building a decision tree on top of that could be quite a lot of fun. I'm not quite sure how to do it, but that's Pete's problem. Excellent. Perfect. Um, and it could be, tell me if this is too difficult to prompt, but if we had a series of dimensions, which is part of this conversation, could we, and, and if we, and we, and if we pointed to somebody like Marshall Kirkpatrick or a bunch of others who have written a lot about these topics online, and if we were using an LLM that's up to date, not stuck in 2021, could we ask it to populate the dimensions for that person and infer from their writings what that is, and therefore not have to ask them to fill it out? And then we could email the resulting thing and say, hey, our, our smart brain thinks that you would answer it this way. Could you correct it? Wow. <laughs> I know. Oh, let Flancy speak. He's put his hand up. He's to yeah, okay. himself. <laughs> Go for it. On that topic, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the... There's, I, I keep going back to the what I, I believe could be the killer app, although that seems violent <laughs> for like you know for some of these, which is like you know the actual sharing. For example, like you know as as soon as you have n people wanted to contribute their uh, notes or pull to a commons, uh, massive wiki and whatever, etc., then you you know the sources, you know where the repository where their data is. So just with that you have like a, a good a start to figure out how they're actually editing that because different tools will have different uh, fingerprints to put it some way. Uh, in the case of the Agora, when you add a repository, you optionally can say what, which tool you use mainly. Uh, it's just a freeform field. I'd forgotten about Stackshare. Thanks for pointing to it. Mm -hmm. Pete, you're very quiet. What do you think about the idea of having an LLM, an LLM um pre-populate or draft populate you know personal profiles other content and then and then uh, and then letting it loose um i don't know it sounds like a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> although i i have to say part of the reason i, I was so quiet is i took uh i took about two-thirds of jerry's list of thinking frameworks and and said hey gpt uh what are some more wow so here you go Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> oh. Damn. Goodness me. Hey, this is where nice I work. Uh, and, yeah, and, half, like, and a third yep, of those yep. I've no, got. One. Yep, yeah, yep, a third of yep. those I've got. So 
Very cool. Wow. The I'm real question is how many of these are entirely fantasy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, but here in a wiki environment, is like the ones which don't exist, maybe we'll create very easily. Yeah, actually, there's there's a weird thing where sometimes uh, GPT will hallucinate something that ought to exist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, exactly. It's it's basically projecting into the space things that sometimes are eminently reasonable that we just haven't done yet. Like I, I'm I willing to bet the double diamond framework is completely invented, and we need to go figure out what it is. Well, I'm just, just kidding. It probably exists. I'll just ask Chat GPT what it is, and then figure out if it's useful. You right, know? right. You know, um... entirely. <laughs> I, Pete, I, I haven't finished your novel, your Chat GPT novel, uh, Hot Air. Um, yeah. But I mean, uh, how long did that take you to do? Wow. Uh, you know, the funny thing is, it took probably about thirty or forty minutes cumulative <gasps> time, and then, and then probably two hours to actually publish it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you actually asked Chat GPT to write, you know, to write the code? For the TFT map that you need, it, that you know you need to do for the I, TFT map. I, I I haven't because it's it's a little in, it's a little involved. I it's it's a little bit quicker to just write it myself. Um, okay. But but sometimes it's you know uh, sometimes it's worth coding with. I've only tried it once and it was it was okay. Mm -hmm. um, the, so thanks for mentioning it, Matthew. The, this was um, a story I, I kind of accidentally started with um, with ChatGPT, and one of the one of the things I didn't write write in the write up is it's like okay, so it's gotten it's getting to the point where instead of choosing a book to read, a pre written book to read, you just like you know help help ChatGPT tell you the story of the book that you want to read. So I, it, it reminds me of Fancy in a couple couple meetings ago said, how long until we have a, a gen tube where it's just like, oh, I want to watch something. And, you know, it just starts making a movie for you. <laughs> I, I also experimented a bit with uh, like, a, you know, fictional forks. I don't know if you have the, uh, this uh, thing. I saw I go to Hacker News often. I guess, I don't know, we all Sorry. have our, this uh, Hacker News, you know, this, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but like, we all have our feeds, I guess. And I saw this article that had this very evocative uh, subject, uh, or like title, and I was like, well, maybe what I want is to ask JGBD to write, you know, this article, just because it seems, it seems so uh, simulating as a prompt, and read that first, before I actually read the, the, actual, the actual thing. So, you know, you can imagine an extension that gives you like a, a, the same as opening new tab, you know, opening JGBT or in like a generative uh, context. So you, you could be forking into like fiction and reality, you know, like uh, more easy. It's going to be interesting to have a chat GPT bot that exists in your browser like Hypothesis, where it'll tell you that it's got some mm -hmm. comments or, it, you know, it, it knows about this or it could summarize this for you or whatever. That'd be mm -hmm. a fun Oh, they're like Clippy. We could totally resuscitate Clippy. We could have Clippy with like a bandage over his forehead and his, <laughs> the end of his the end of his clip in a sling. Yeah, and he, yeah, he could yeah. show up with with like a you know a missing tooth and, and talk to us. I mean, we could do that. I could solve everything that, and you you notice our paper clips or the runaway pa the runaway paper clip function. Right, right. right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is it. Uh, if it's I think it comes back to the, 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 the thing that Aram mentioned, you know, how many of these 58 frameworks actually exist or not. I mean, you have to be on your guard so much if you have a little assistant popping up and saying, I know something about this, you know, and then it says something completely wrong, completely untrue, but absolutely believable because, it's, you know, it's mining the entirety of everything that's ever been written. And so it looks really right. And it's customized to your interest. It's watching what you're doing and re you're reading all your emails and, and looking at everything you're looking at. It would be almost impossible to, well, I mean, if you don't want to be misled, you'd have to turn it off, wouldn't you? I mean, it would be, you spend more time checking whether it was true or not. I'm not sure that the cost benefit is there if you're using it for that sort of thing. That's why I wanted to bring up Pete's um, hot air thing because it's that's that seems to be something that ChatGPT is more made to do, isn't it? 
to to write for you not necessarily things which are true but his, his you know he's written basically you've mm. written basically the treatment for a tv series i think mm. there or it, that's yeah. what it is it's, you know each each thing is an episode in these people and you what find out what happens in each episode without actually watching the whole thing um, um great. yeah Brief aside, I went to a meetup here in Portland yesterday morning that was all about uh, chat GPT and so forth. And there were three panelists and it was actually quite good. And just for fun, uh, there was Q&A and I asked one of the questions and I introduced myself as Trent Krim, the independent. And that got a really nice laugh. Um, but it was very interesting how many people were there who were pretty deep in. Uh, the advice was uh, there's kind of a land grab right now. You, you, you like start anything you want. The cost is low, but don't expect it to be the same in 18 months. Um, this stuff is moving really, really quickly. Uh, and so, you know, your, your current ideas will probably be outdated pretty soon. Uh, but kind of go for it. It was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I met a couple of local entrepreneurs. I, I just haven't been in the community, in the local tech community enough. So that was nice. And it was nice to be with humans. Humans are good. Yeah, what's that like? I, I, <laughs> that yeah, good. yeah, I was rusty. <laughs> yeah. So, so I asked ChatGPT to add w Wikipedia links to that list, um, oh. and it's funny. It got about two thirds of the way, and it and it quit, uh, it ran out of memory or something. But, but anyway, since I said add Wikipedia links, um, all of them had to be Wikipedia links. So there's the innovation ambition matrix. I'm like, that eh, sounds like a BS one. So I click it and yeah, it's BS. Huh? And then I did a search for it. Ambition, amb amb uh, innovation ambition matrix is a real thing. It just doesn't have a Wikipedia page. So yeah. So it, it provided a Wikipedia link, but this the link doesn't is is four or four. Yeah. Ambition, ah, innovation, but, ambition but it should matrix. be. It's a real thing. So somebody should go write the Wikipedia article. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so, so, so I, here I guess you know I don't know if you, what you we are experimenting with like using JWD for writing plans because plans are at the intersect between fact and fiction, right? Oh, that's good. I I've tried I, I, you know I asked it uh, well uh, I mean for a few for a few plans uh, and it seems to do quite well. Also has this like you know pretty structure you know like generates you know ten steps and so on. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'm, uh, and this brings me back as usual to like, I guess, pattern languages and, and so on, right? Because like, uh, in the sense of like, cool, cool exploration of like problem space yield solutions, just by, you know, simplifying and breaking down into steps and so on, which is, are things which seem, like, you know, within its, um, uh, you know, uh, skill set. Cool. I you know, I'll, I'll bet uh, ChatGPT would be really good at converting textish stuff like descriptions into pattern languages. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'd be perfect, but that would be a good way to start, you know, flesh out a pattern language of, of something that, that's kind of deep and rich enough. What yeah. would be the raw material that it would that it would process? Um, like a like a framework, you know. Mm -hmm. Dead people. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like that. Documentation as well for procedures. Uh, like, cool. yeah, like a um, uh, uh, like pattern language for um, uh, for innovation frameworks or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's funny. Like, I don't know about you all, but trying to get used to the Chat GPT world or the GPT world has me like thinking more crazy ideas than before. It's like, it feels like there's more possible where before I just, I saw a lot of stumbling blocks. I'm like, I don't know how to overcome that. So that path stops. Now it's like, you could at least give it a try. And, yes. and there's a, you know, even odds that something good would come of it. And, and if not, in the doing of that, you might actually find your way to some other idea or around the, the sand dune. And that's really cool. It's there's like a there's like a required flexibility of thinking that we need to figure out. By the way, um, I think there's a really uh, certainly like Evo Haining already has a Promptcraft book out. Uh, apparently, Promptcraft engineers are like demanding like four hundred thousand dollars salaries or something crazy ass like that. 
Uh, so a, a, if you all want to change tracks right now and, and go do that, I recommend it because it's going to not, it may not last a year, but Hey, making nearly half a million in a year is not a bad thing. Um, but also there may be a really interesting kind of boot camp offer to do somehow here. And I was actually seriously thinking, cause I'm trying to do the, the cyborg thing. I was like, and I, to my mind, uh, prompt craft is an aspect of being a good cyborg. And we're going to need to learn how to integrate ourselves with software in ways that are as comfortable and flexible and generative as we are describing right now. And so should we create a channel on the Mattermost called uh, Bootcamp or, or ChatGPT Bootcamp or something? We already have a ChatGPT and AI channel. Should we use that to, to try to do some of this? But if people wanted to learn up, like where would they go? Medium where they will find blog posts written by ChatGPT based on other blog posts. No, I've, I found one because, you know, I, I curate stuff into my hub and I was reading this blog, I was reading this blog post, which I queued earlier and I think I've read this before, you know, I'm writing notes on it. I've read this before. So I do a search in my hub for the same type of no. So I did a search for, this is how I would have tagged this new article. And I found another article which I hubbed like a week or two ago, and I put the two side by side, and one was basically a plagiarization of the other. And it wasn't a human plagiarization, it was almost certainly chat. So chat GPT used to plagiarize articles about chat GPT to write new articles about chat GPT, basically. So we are yeah, already being absorbed into the board. Go ahead, yeah, it's Adam. even worse than that, considering how many um, medium articles that are written by humans are still basically made up bullshit yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah, it really is it's just so i mean my 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 medium feed is just it's just prompt engineering guides but most of them are just rehashes of each other's they just rehash each other's work you know i mean now that it's got a um a paywall in there for the last couple of years it's one way of making money at the, terrible way of making money. at the panel yesterday morning there was a guy sitting in the front row right in front of me who was actually working chat gpt as a fourth panelist uh and they started with it asking the first question which was not a terrible question uh, but the, but they had they had chat gpt also generate funny introductions for the three panelists uh and, and with a particular sense of humor that worked really well everybody they got a good chuckle and was he getting paid four hundred thousand dollars a year for? Not as far as I know, <laughs> he would not have been in that room, <laughs> <laughs> unless prompt engineering is a like part-time kind of job because it's so efficient. So the question is whether it's here to stay. I guess I I, I think you brought it up. In, in, someone brought it up here in one of the um, latest calls, or it's just like a sort of like a transition uh, period. Uh, when, uh, so while uh, uh, we, we have this window where like, uh, you know, with program engineering, you can reach some like results, uh, but you know, in GPT-4 or 5, or uh, GPT-4 is already here, GPT-5, that will be, not be uh, necessary anymore because it will be built in. Uh, so I guess like, you know, is, is it a level of frameworks in programming where like, you know, you can agree the framework independently, but you usually, you always have a framework that has value or is it like, uh, well, I guess I'm, I'm struggling for, uh, we're looking for like an alternative to that. So I guess I, I sort of believe it's more like a framework. It's, it's uh, ChatGPT to me looks a lot like a general purpose computer, yeah. um, which is fascinating for people, you know, the, the folks on this call and, and utterly boring for anybody who actually wants to get any work done. It's like, okay, what do I do with it? It's like, well, <laughs> do prompt engineering. That's so much fun. It's like, no, it's not fun, dude. I, I, one of the other comments yeah, stuff to get done. One of the panelists' answer to one of the questions was interesting. Yeah. He was like, uh, the difference between 3.5 and 4 is very significant. Trying to field a commercial service that serves muggles or clients with 3.5, really hard, very dicey, like we're backing off. 4.0 actually sort of gets there. And might might round that bend out. It was really interesting. I, I think that's true. It's got a lot more. It's it's more safe. It's safer. Um, I I still think it's too general to use. So I like Flancy. I like your idea of of frameworks. It's you 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 won't be writing bare Python code or bare PHP code or right. bare Node code. It's a lot more like you'll use a framework for um, biological you know research or 
uh, legal um, legal document stuff or something yeah. like that. I think another way to think of it, it's uh, like like um, ChatGPT is is kind of like AWS. It's it's just bulk services, and um, to to really use it, you and somebody who installs a server that verticalizes, you know, uh, the back end of that. So. Uh, so you'll have, you know, health insurance vertical or a life insurance vertical or, you know, uh, gun control legislation vertical, um, and you'll buy that. And the whoever's whoever's done the vertical solution will have a bunch of stuff that, uh, you know, adds prompts to uh, actually structures the things that you want to do. Do you want to start a legal document? Do you want to edit a legal mm -hmm. document? Do you want to compare two legal documents? Do you want to mash them up together, right? Um, and then, uh, so it'll, it'll give you a framework for things that you can do with the AI, and then it'll do value add, you know, um, okay, you know, they asked me to merge these two documents. Here's the prompts that would do that. Um, and the user won't see that. It's, it's built into the infrastructure right. of the, the tool. Mm -hmm. That's Basically, where it's what, I, what I call a task in the blog, in the draft blog post, I, I sent you very recently, but you haven't had a chance to look at it yet. But yeah, the idea is that you've got an interface there and there's some, there's a set of tasks you can choose like a drop down. And when you choose a particular task, it, it pulls up a number of things that you can do and depending on the task and depending on what you put in it, it then goes and does some things, packages all that together, sends it off to chat GPT. So it's like um, each each option in that drop down is a prompt that really works really well. And then it might ask you for a bit more information about how would you like to me to write that? Would you like me to write it like a high school teacher or a university professor or whatever? And you write, you know, you write a few things down and then it packages everything up and goes to its own store of content as well as, you know, the wider internet. And, and Agreed. yeah, I, this is exactly, exactly what I want to do um, when we meet my developer on Monday. Uh, so um, mm -hmm. yeah, I just have to spend a lot of time reading terrible blog posts about prompt engineering. because. <laughs> At one point, I'm actually going to have to get myself immersed in that, and it's going to suck. <laughs> it's going to be awful. To to go a little bit further with that packaging thing, there's at least a, a couple. Um, there's Auto GPT, I think, and Baby AGI, where they'll take a a task, and the the a supervisor will ask Chat GPT, "How would you plan and execute this task? Um, break this up into things that you, that Chat GPT would do." So somebody, there, there's people are starting to build um, kind of autonomous planning engines that use ChatGPT to set up a, a set of tasks for ChatGPT to to burn through. Right. So, so you, use, using ChatGPT to use ChatGPT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. No. And then you can run the whole thing, right? You, you've got a yes. little supervisor that just does the feedback loop and right. keeps it going. Which is why, like, you can imagine the, uh, the DBD5 saying, okay, when, when a user sends me a prompt, you know, mercy to legal documents, or uh, then, uh, you know, f uh, does that uh, straight and does that with, like, the prompt, which is the prompt, uh, and so on. I, I think there's similar things happening in... Uh, image generation, you know, when like you can use like stable diffusion as on straight. I don't know exactly how the maze work there, or you can like uh, I saw some experience of people expanding prompts with GPTJ, so the prompt will be richer. So it adds things like you know photorealistic, or you know it adds detail to the prompt, uh, which uh, has the consequence of improving the end result uh, diffusion. So yeah, this process is that maybe AI. Uh, but I have to say, like, m probably the most exciting, <laughs> I really like how you put it, Jerry, where, like, you said something, uh, like, you have been thinking of crazier or out, more out there ideas because of GBD. This, like, it, like that, that, that felt like, you know, open up problem space, which is clearly, you know, what's happening, you know, uh, because of all these ideas, uh, you know, started or otherwise. But, you know, imagine, like, you know, millions, billions of people, maybe, just, like, thinking new thoughts because you can dare to go there. Because mm -hmm. you know you have this even the the fact that JGPT may uh, as we push its limits and you know and, and the limits of of, of uh, future uh, models it may still remain like 
unskillful or, or like flaky and so on. But even the fact that, you know, when you write something, you are like, well, maybe we'll nail it or maybe it will be crap. That actually may be more addictive and fun uh, to some extent as an experience than having it be uh, nailed it all the time. Because when he nails it, you are like, oh, see, I spotted something that worked. I did the right prompt. I mean, you have some participation there. And uh, you know, this experiment that, that say that, you know, when something gives a reward only part of the time, it is more fun and addictive than when it gives a return all the time. Intermittent reward schedules or something like that. Right, right. Yeah. So, you know, when you're like pushing the limits in this sense, uh, I, I guess, you know, all the pieces are there to like make it, uh, you know, what we're seeing, I guess, which is a phenomenon. I don't know. I think you all are a little overly optimistic. Well, uh, that's our job. I, uh, on one hand, sure, people could be using it to think new thoughts, but in general, when you go out in the wild and see how people are actually using chat mm. GPT, they're mostly using it to not think. They're <laughs> delegating their thinking to chat GPT uh, with some rather negative results. Are they always negative, though? I mean, even if it, if you used to think... I mean, you generate and you're like, do I believe this? No, do I believe this? And eventually you're like, yeah, this sounds about right. So it, would, it could be more like a co-processor, I guess. Uh, maybe I'll, yeah, I'm back to optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> I was, when I was thinking, when Jerry was saying earlier that, you know, how it, it, it's sort of very exciting and, and liberating, I was thinking of back to the late 90s when then there was this sense that anything could happen um, but then anyone in their garage could do something and it could become big. Yeah. But now it's not like that. Now it's anything could happen, but it's going to be done by Google or Microsoft or, or, or you know, because you have to have the, the sure. sheer mass power, so uh, building money and, and compute power, no? Building and training an LLM takes a lot of compute power. But once it's canned and packaged, if you can then use it, any little schmo can go use the thing. So... Yes, they're limited to the models on offer, mm. but but just like HTML and web hosting, like anybody can go do stuff. Right. The easiest yeah, way to think about these mod yeah. The easiest way to think about these models is like think about them like using WordPress, right? The model is the platform for a particular thing you want to do that it's particularly well suited for. Um, and then you can feed your inputs and your outputs into it. To make it better and you and improve on it from the baseline um but i like i do think starting with a, the basic llms yeah so and it's not for everyone some llms will work for some people some won't um but like well, just electricity think of it like electricity right yeah. I think that might be a little a little too much but like it is it, it doesn't actually take that much time and money to train an LLM to do something. If you come in with like an existing model that's pretty basic that won't deform what you're trying to do, which is out there. Um, it's just, then you have to use it for something, right? The, the training that needs to go into something like ChatGPT, that's exhaustive. That's not with a normal sort of user um, capabilities. But there's lots of things you can, there are lots of models out there that you could use to train um, and, and do stuff. But then like, okay, you've trained a model with all of your text. What thing is this useful for now? Yeah. Um, and right now, there are not that many answers. I would argue that, and we've already had this discussion, so I won't go into depth, but I would argue that chat GPT is not even a, itself a useful thing, really, right? People are doing cool things with it in general, but useful things less so. Um, but putting that aside, like, yeah, I have a project where I'm training, building out a pipeline to train an LLM to automatically tag um, articles for me. Uh, did something very similar for work, try to do it myself with a different set of sources, but like, that's useful, but like, for me personally, doing what I'm doing, um, I'm not. I'm not sure how broadly useful it is. Okay, I've got a weird question. Um, <laughs> uh, 
so I, I, and I don't know. I so, so imagine the the hot air experiment, right? Um, uh, I ended up with, I don't know, forty responses from ChatGPT and had to write kind of a, a preface to the whole thing. And it's this big hairball kind of thing. Um, and it's kind of interesting. I I did make a page where you can read the whole thing all at once, and it's unreadable because it's just like there's too much text. Um, it's like I an ebook has pages for a reason. It turns out, so I really like the format I came up with, the massive wiki to publish, you know, little little snippets. So, imagine something else that size, an experiment. I, I've got another experiment which was less well publicized, even less well publicized. Um, I I put some links to it in um, the Bioweekly Plex Dispatch. Um, it's two versions of um, uh, kind of a, tech, a summarization of a, a really long uh, email thread uh, in in the OGM mailing list, 